Welcome to the MAKO Video Library Series. The MAKO MB11 is a hearing screening system that uses auditory brainstem response, ABR, technology to screen infants for hearing loss. It uses state-of-the-art test methods and an automated response detection procedure that can produce very fast test times with a high degree of accuracy. The MB11 is a PC-based system. The MB11 comes with everything you need to conduct newborn hearing screenings. The Barophone comes with its attached cable connection for the USB box, a USB cable, a cradle for holding the Barophone, electrode gel, an operator's manual, and software on a USB drive. The MB11 Classic comes with a preamplifier with its cable connection to a USB box, the USB cable, electrode lead wires, insert earphones with ear cup adapters, a box of disposable supplies containing electrodes and ear cups, a tube of skin prep, and an operator's manual. If you purchase the MB11 Classic with ear tips rather than ear cups, your insert earphones will have clear ear tip adapters at the end of the tubes rather than the black ear cup adapters. You will also receive a starter supply of disposable ear tips. The MB11 hardware connects to a PC using a standard USB cable. When the PC is turned on, you will see a red light on the MB11 hardware indicating that it's receiving power from the PC through the USB connection. When a battery-powered PC is used, screenings can be performed on battery power alone without connection to an electrical outlet. The MB11 Barophone includes three integrated reusable electrodes and an ear cushion surrounding the acoustic transducer. The electrodes are mounted on a spring mechanism that allows them to conform to the shape of the baby's head. The vertex electrode is mounted on a disc that rotates 180 degrees to fit a wide range of head sizes. For smaller heads of premature babies, you may need to change this position. The Barophone has been used successfully on babies as young as 32 weeks postmenstrual age. The MB11 Classic hardware includes a preamplifier module that contains jacks for the connection of three electrode wires and the right and left earphones. The electrode jacks are color-coded to match the color of the electrode wire. Make sure that the connector on the electrode wire is fully inserted into the jack of the same color. Disposable snap electrodes are connected to the end of the electrode wires, getting them ready for placement on the baby. The proper connections for the earphones are shown on the preamplifier label. It's important that earphones are plugged in fully to the proper jack so that the acoustic stimulus is delivered to the correct test ear. There are two options for delivery of the acoustic stimulus to the baby's ear using the earphones. You can choose either ear cups that adhere to the skin around the baby's ears or ear tips that are inserted into the baby's ear canals. Both are intended for single patient use and should be thrown away after use. The special adapters at the end of the red and the blue tubes that connect to the ear cups or the ear tips are not disposable. Be sure not to throw these away accidentally. The selection of ear cups or ear tips must be made at the time you purchase the MB11 Classic. The calibration of your hardware will be specific to your selection. Be sure to follow the hand washing and infection control procedures required in your facility. In this video, we may show the use of gloves for touching the baby, but this may not be required in your facility. If you're unsure whether the Barophone was properly cleaned and disinfected after its last use, then clean and disinfect it before applying it to the baby's skin. The Barophone electrodes make contact with the baby's head at three locations. One is just below or behind the earlobe, this is referred to as the mastoid electrode. One electrode lays just above the ear. This is the ground electrode. The vertex electrode lays on the forehead at the hairline. 
The skin at these areas must be prepared using electrode gel so that the electrodes can achieve good contact for recording the ABR. Squeeze enough electrode gel out of the tube for screening both ears. Apply it to the back of your gloved hand or on a 2x2 gauze pad or paper towel. The locations that must be prepared can be identified precisely by placing a small amount of electrode gel on each of the electrodes and positioning the barophone on the baby's head. The best location for the vertex electrode is toward the baby's hairline at the forehead rather than back towards the crown of the head. A more forward position allows better contact of the ear cushion to the skin around its full circumference and avoids areas of thicker hair. Once the barophone is placed properly, remove it from the skin and set it aside. Residual gel will remain on the skin at the electrode locations, marking the proper spots. Using an additional drop of electrode gel, rub the skin at the mastoid location 15 to 20 times in a straight line from the back to the front. Repeat this procedure at the two other electrode locations. Keep the gel at the three areas parallel to one another so that there's no chance that the gel from one location will contact the gel at another electrode site. Avoid using too much gel and avoid rubbing the gel in circles. Apply a small amount of electrode gel, just enough to wet the top of the electrode, onto each of the electrodes. Place the mastoid electrode on the prepared skin. Lay the top of the barophone down gently so that the ground electrode and vertex electrode make contact with the prepared skin sites. Verify that the ear cushion is making contact with the baby's skin all around the ear with no large gaps between the cushion and the skin. You will need to hold the barophone in place so that it remains on the prepared skin throughout the test. You shouldn't apply any pressure to the barophone, you're merely supporting it in place. When the barophone is in place and the baby is quiet, select the Start Measure button to begin the screening. Refer to the software chapter for information about the screening process. When the screening is complete, remove the barophone from the baby and set it aside. Gently remove excess gel from the baby's skin. Try not to wake up the baby. Position the baby for testing the other ear and repeat the skin preparation process and screening for the other ear. When both ears have been screened, clean and disinfect the barophone so that it's ready for the next screening. For screening with the MB11 Classic, the electrodes should be placed on the center of the forehead at the hairline, on the nape of the neck, and on the cheek. Before placing the electrodes, the skin at these locations must be prepared by cleaning them with an electrode skin preparation product such as NuPrep or an electrode skin prep pad. Using a cotton swab, a gauze pad, or your finger, rub the NuPrep into the skin 10 to 15 times. Wipe off the residue with a towel or gauze pad. Perform the same procedure at the two other electrode sites. Pictures on the pre-amplifier label show proper connection of the electrodes to the baby's head. Place the disposable electrode attached to the white wire on the nape of the neck and press gently in place. Place the electrode connected to the black wire on the baby's cheek. It can be placed on either side of the face. Place the electrode connected to the yellow wire on the forehead. Disposable ear cups are coupled to the earphones using a special black adapter on the end of the earphone tubes. Insert the adapter into the hole in the foam of the ear cup. The red earphone with the red tubing must be used on the right ear. The blue earphone with the blue tubing must be placed on the left ear. Looking through the clear cover on the ear cup, Position it around the baby's ear with the adapter pointing toward the top of the baby's head. Press gently around the perimeter of the ear cup so that it sticks to the baby's skin. Repeat this process for the opposite ear. Use of the ear cups makes it possible to screen both ears at the same time. When the baby is prepped, start the measurement. If you're using an MB11 Classic with ear tips, the disposable ear tips are coupled to the earphones using a special clear adapter on the end of the earphone tubes. Choose the size of the ear tip that's needed. For most newborns, the red 3-5mm flanged ear tip is recommended. 
For larger or older infants, the blue or yellow ear tip may be needed. With the ear tip installed on the adapter, insert the ear tip into the baby's ear canal. A secure fit is best achieved by pulling down gently on the baby's ear lobe to open up the canal. Release the ear lobe when the ear tip is securely inserted. The software allows screening both ears simultaneously using the ear tips. It may be a challenge, however, to keep both ear tips securely inserted into the baby's ear for a binaural or both ear screening. Rolling a small blanket and positioning it around the top of the baby's head may help to prevent the baby from turning her head, dislodging one of the ear tips. If a binaural test cannot be performed because of the baby's position, screen each ear individually. When the baby is prepped and quiet, start the measurement. After the screening is complete, remove the single-use disposables from the baby and discard them. The baby may experience temporary discomfort as you remove adhesive products from the skin. To perform an ABR screening using the MB11 software involves a few simple steps. First, enter the baby's information including the baby's last name, first name, birth date, gender, and an ID or medical record number. Choose the screener name from a drop-down list. If the baby's information was previously entered into the database, do not enter it again. Instead, select the search button to access a list of names in the database. You can scroll the list to locate the desired baby's name. They are sorted by last name in alphabetical order. If the database is large, you can use various filters to shorten the list to find the desired baby faster. For example, you can enter the last name to reduce the list to the names of the babies whose last name matches your entry. As you type more characters, the list is shortened more and more. Or you can filter based on a test date range. For example, if you select data from today from the list, only the babies who were tested today will appear on the list. When you see the name of the baby you wish to screen, double click on the name. The selected baby's information appears on the main screen. It's ghosted out since it cannot be edited. Select the ear you want to test first by clicking on the right or left symbol or by clicking on the ear button until the correct ear is chosen. When the background of the ear button is red, the right ear is selected. When the background is blue, the left ear is selected. If you're using classic hardware, it will be possible to click on the ear button until the background color is pink, which sets up for testing both ears simultaneously. When the ear is selected, select the measure button to proceed to the measurement screen. When the baby is prepared for screening, select the start measure button to begin the screening. When a screening has started, the quality of the contact of the electrodes to the skin, referred to as the impedance, is checked. Feedback is shown on the top of the screen with three traffic lights, one for each electrode. When all three traffic lights remain yellow or green for several seconds, the ABR data collection will begin automatically. If any of the traffic lights shows solid or flashing red, then this electrode does not have good contact with the baby's skin. You'll need to resolve the problem before the data collection will begin. Please see the chapter on troubleshooting tips. After a successful impedance check, the ABR measurement will begin automatically. A line will begin to appear on the time graph. After each one second of data sample is collected, a segment of the line will be drawn. The line will be red for the right ear and blue for the left ear. Data samples that contain too much noise will be rejected as artifact and you'll see that the growth of the line pauses. These artifacts generally occur because the baby is active or because the electrode contact has been lost. Artifacts can also be observed by watching the signal quality feedback at the top of the measurement screen. Under good conditions, the signal quality will display green, but yellow or red if there is interference. If you prefer the alternate EEG view, you will see that under good test conditions, the EEG line will be virtually flat. If there is interference, this line will reflect this activity. Also during the ABR measurement, the LED light on the MB11 hardware will be green when good data samples are occurring, but will flash yellow or red as artifacts occur. 
When the data collection line ascends and moves into the green area at the top of the graph, a pass result will display and the test will stop automatically. After 180 seconds of good ABR data samples have been collected without the line crossing into the green area, the screening will stop automatically with a refer result. When the screening is complete on one ear, select the other ear button on the measurement screen to change the test ear. Prepare the baby for testing the other ear and select measure when you're ready to begin the screening. When you perform a binaural test using the classic hardware, a line will display for each ear on the same graph. It's common for one ear to achieve a pass result before the other ear. The screening will continue until both ears have achieved a pass result. After 180 seconds of good ABR data samples have been collected without the line ascending and crossing into the green area for both ears, the screening will stop automatically with a refer result. The Barophone is intended for use on intact external skin around the ears and on the scalp. It should not be used if the skin has any open wounds or sores or if the baby has a contagious skin condition. The Barophone must be cleaned and disinfected after use on each baby. Clean off any residual gel from the electrodes and ear cushion using a gauze pad or disinfectant wipe. If you set the Barophone in the cradle during the baby's screening, it must also be cleaned and disinfected. Disinfect the electrodes, ear cushion, cable, and other components that made contact with the baby or the baby's bedding by wiping them with a fresh disinfectant wipe. Use of a non-alcohol based disinfectant product is recommended. If an alcohol based disinfectant is used, the ear cushion material will be affected over time, causing it to harden and crack. It will need to be replaced more frequently. Be sure to follow the directions for use and handling precautions on the disinfectant product. Allow the disinfectant to dry thoroughly according to the manufacturer's recommendations before using the Barophone on the baby. On a regular basis, the electrodes should be removed from the Barophone and inspected for the presence of gel buildup inside the black gel protector. The gel protector can be removed from the stainless steel electrode for more thorough cleaning. Additionally, the earphone cushion should be removed periodically for inspection and cleaning of the plastic under the ear cushion. When the components are clean and dry, reinstall them onto the Barophone, making sure they're securely attached. The MB11 Classic uses disposable electrodes and disposable ear cups or ear tips. These disposables are intended for single baby use and should be discarded. If ear tips are used, the clear ear tip adapter should be examined for the presence of debris inside the adapter after use on each baby. If debris is present, the adapter should be removed from the tubing and the adapter cleaning brush should be used to remove the debris. After cleaning, reattach the adapter to the tube. Non-disposable components of the hardware that touch the baby or the baby's bedding should be wiped with a disinfectant wipe after use on each baby. Use of a non-alcohol based disinfectant product is recommended. If alcohol based disinfectant is used, the earphone tubing material may be affected over time, causing it to harden and crack. The tubes will need to be replaced on a more frequent basis. Be sure to follow the directions for use and handling precautions on the disinfectant product. Allow the disinfectant to dry thoroughly according to the manufacturer's recommendations before using the Classic on the next baby. Choosing a suitable test time based on the state of the baby is a critical part of successful efficient screening. Try to screen the baby shortly after feeding when the baby's sleeping comfortably. Swaddling the baby in a blanket helps to limit the movement of the arms and calms the baby. Delays in screening progress occur when the baby is moving. This movement can be obvious when the baby is crying or actively moving the arms and legs. 
or the movement may be more subtle, such as eye blinking, sucking, or muscle tension in the neck and shoulder area near the electrodes. The baby can be tested while being held or even while breastfeeding when the sucking activity has slowed down. Infants can also be screened while sleeping quietly in a car seat. If it appears that the baby will not quiet down quickly, select the pause button on the measurement screen to suspend data collection. When the baby has quieted again, select the continue button to resume. If the baby appears to be quiet but artifacts are occurring, check the electrodes to make sure they're still in good contact with the prepared electrode sites. Reposition them if it's necessary. To resolve poor impedance at one or more of the electrode locations, check that the barophone is resting on the skin that you prepared with the electrode gel. Move the position of the barophone electrode slightly to see if you can achieve improved impedance. Lift up the electrode that shows poor impedance and massage a little more gel into the skin. If good impedance can't be achieved with the electrode gel, rub a small amount of new prep electrode skin prep, which is slightly abrasive, into the skin at the site and try again. Check that the disposable electrodes are securely adhering to the baby's skin at the prepared locations and that the electrode wires are securely attached. Lift off the electrode that shows poor impedance and rub a little more new prep into the skin. Wipe off the new prep and reapply the electrode. Depending on skin type, you may need to apply a new electrode if the original electrode will not adhere securely to the skin. If you continue to experience a problem achieving good electrode impedance, try testing on PC battery only rather than using AC electricity. Also check the connection of the MB11 USB cable to the PC and to the MB11 hardware module to make sure that it's securely connected on both ends. Electrical interference in the test environment can be difficult to identify. It can be caused by cell phones, other computers, large monitors, RFID tags on the baby, or other monitoring equipment attached to the baby, or nearby X-ray or MRI equipment. When electrical interference occurs, it may take trying different troubleshooting techniques to discover the source. Moving to a different location, turning off non-critical electrical devices is suggested. Of course, you'll need to check with the baby's nurse or doctor to determine whether other medical devices attached to the baby can be temporarily disabled or removed. Thank you for choosing the MAKO MB11 ABR screener. If you have additional questions, refer to your operator's manual or contact your local MAKO representative.